Hello, Scorpio. Welcome to your November 2023 reading. Let's go ahead and get started here with a card from my intuitive deck. So what is it that Scorpio needs to know for the month? Let's see what comes through. Okay. Um, I'm feeling like there's kind of like three groups of Scorpios right now. There's the group that is going round and round and round and just cannot seem to get out of some kind of a place, right? Can't get out of a financial hole, can't get out of a, a bad relationship, can't get out of a bad job, whatever the case is. It's just been really hard to take that initiative or to make that happen because maybe there are legitimate reasons, you know. Um, the second group are, are Scorpios that have made it out but are not necessarily in that place of stability yet. And then there's that third group who's really flourishing and succeeding with what they're trying to do. Wherever you are on that spectrum, all right, like if you're in the first group in that spiral, chances are you're really close to getting out. It's just a matter of one or two adjustments or decisions that's gonna get you into that place but once you do that, there will still be that faltering, unpredictability, a little bit of instability while you're learning about who it is you're becoming and while you're learning about your new path. Okay, if you're in that second group, just know that you're kind of coming to the end of that learning phase and making it toward that more abundant and stable phase. If you're in the stable phase, there's gonna be even more for you, or you may be starting that cycle over again. But I'm seeing wherever you are on the spectrum, I am seeing a positive upswing, which hopefully can bring you some kind of ease, all right, because it means you're not gonna be where you've been. You're gonna be moving into the next phase of it. Not that the next phase is necessarily better or more stable, but at least it's progress. At least there's something, um, you know, different to look forward to that it's not just the same old same old thing i think you've learned a lot scorpio this card is an indication of how much you've learned it's an indication of how much you've how far you've come and especially if you're in that first group that just feel feels like if i could talk feels like you've been going round and round and round again feels like you've learned the lessons, right? You've extracted the wisdom and you truly are ready. It's like a graduation, right? You're ready for that next, that next uh, endeavor, if you will. And November might bring some sense of triumph or some sense of accomplishment. And I, I do see some pretty steady progress, you know, a lot of consistency, a lot of persistence, because wherever you are, whichever group you're in, there is definitely a part of you that says, well, you know what? This is not acceptable for me. It's not acceptable for me. It's not acceptable for what I want in my life. It's not acceptable for this time in my life. And something has to change. I think Scorpio is highly driven by change itself. And uh, I don't know. I think you're kind of grabbing the bull by the horns here and making some really good things happen for yourself, which is awesome. And it's not something you have to sit around and wait for the universe to do. I think this really comes from you and your choices and the actions you decide to take. It, this is not a sit around and wait kind of deal, okay? Beautiful, the badger spirit. Be fearless and bold, exactly. <laughs> like This is the time for Scorpio to really push down on that gas pedal and say, we're going for it. We're going for it. We're going to make it happen. We're making choices. We're pulling the trigger on certain decisions. We are aligning ourselves with the outcome that we want. And I don't think you need to be scared. I really don't. I don't think you need to be scared. I don't think you need to be weary. Like, I don't think you need to be in a situation where you are, um, so worried about the outcome. You know, there's definitely no need to be in some kind of a analysis paralysis. All right. You don't have to think so hard. I think we've done enough thinking with that Mercury retrograde in Virgo. Okay. We're over it. Mercury is in your sign. Now Mars is in your sign. The sun is in your sign and it's time to just 
go. And through Scorpio, Sag, and Capricorn seasons, this is the best time to do that. Be fearless and bold, make the phone calls, talk to the people, put yourself in those rooms, okay? Do the research, look stuff up, invest in the things, whatever it is. See, luck is on your side. Exactly. That's exactly what I'm saying. I really don't think you need to be worried about failure right now. Um, I don't think you need to be worried about not making it. Now, the only way that you would not make it is if you are exhibiting a lot of fear and you continually repeat a pattern knowingly, especially if you're in that first group, the spiral group, you know, it's like you, you know that you've done this before. This is the same behavior. It's the same kind of choice. And you know that it's going to lead to the same outcome. It's the outcome you don't want but you refuse to choose the other things. So that's the only time that you're not going to see progress if, is if you just consciously don't choose the things you need to choose. But luck is on your side. And I think luck in this case, I'm going to kind of throw in the word good, the words, good fortune. All right. Good fortune is on your side. It is behind you. It is supporting you. Okay. So let's pull out the first three tarot cards. What is it that Scorpio needs to know throughout the month of uh, uh, November? Love the emperor with the fearless and bold card. I actually see Scorpio connected with this card a lot. I know this is an Aries card. We even have the Rams here. So I know it's Aries, but because you and Aries share that Mars rulership and right now Mars is in your sign, meaning he is in rulership. I always or not always, but I often see Scorpio coming through in that card. Three of swords and ten. See, I don't mind these sword cards because it tells me that this is like, this is that fed up moment where you're in a situation, you're in a place, you're in a thing and you say, this is not for me anymore. I'm outgrowing it. And let's be honest. Okay. Jupiter in your, in the sign opposite of you. Okay. Jupiter is in Taurus, which is opposing Scorpio. Jupiter in Taurus is asking for expansion. It's asking for new adventures. It's asking to broaden your mind. It's asking you to reach out of that comfort zone. It's asking you to stretch. And it's common when we're in that type of place, when we have that kind of a relationship with Jupiter, um, it's really common that we start looking around and we say, this isn't suitable anymore. And it's not that it's bad, right? It's not that your whole life is bad. And it's not that you don't love and appreciate where you are, because you probably have a lot of things to be appreciative and grateful of and for. Um, but that's not really, that's not it. That's not what, that's not what the issue is. The issue is you want expansion. You want to broaden your horizons. You want more life experience. You want something other than what you have, not from a place of discontent, but because your soul came here to experience stuff. The emperor says, Look at this situation. I'm not feeling, you know, this is a card of betrayal and heartbreak and disappointments. Sometimes this is done by other people. Sometimes we do this to ourselves. And the 10 of swords is kind of like it's done, done, done. You've been through the ringer with it. You know, you you've you've gone through it to death, right? It's just whatever phase, whatever circumstance this is, there is nothing more for you to extract from this. Okay. The, if you continue to stay, uh, or you continue to allow, or you continue to repeat the pattern, you're, first of all, you're, you can't complain about anything because it's all choice based. And second of all, it's just going to kind of put you in that martyr place. All right. Have you ever had someone complain about their circumstance? And then you're like, well, then just do something about it. <laughs> you know, that's kind of what, and I'm not saying you're going to be complaining about your circumstances. I think that what you're doing is you've hit that place that if you, you know, that if you keep going, then it's all kind of like your fault, right? Then it's, then, then the lack of growth 
That's on your shoulders. And when the sun and Mars, two high quality leadership planet, well, sun's not a planet, but like two entities are in your sign, there's a lot of that self-responsibility saying, this is a circumstance. And if I continue to allow it, then it's my fault to a degree. I'm not saying everything is your fault. I'm not saying to take the blame for everyone else's stuff, but you have to take the blame for your stuff and your participation and what you've allowed and what you've continued, you know, because the emperor doesn't really have that kind of patience with himself. You know, he's, he's too interested in making his life better. He's too interested in improving, improving things. So this is actually a fantastic motivator. So uh, that whole speech was really just to tell you, I probably could have skipped all of it, but it was really just to tell you that this is a fantastic period of inspiration. You get fed up, you get annoyed with yourself, you get irritated with things, you get agitated, you get shaken up, and all of that transmutes into inspiration and motivation to hurry up and go do something else, but not haphazardly, not stupidly. There's nothing stupid in the chart right now. I'm not worried about people making dumb decisions unless they're completely you know, unaware of themselves. But for people who are here watching these types of readings, you're not going to do anything stupid. Okay. Virgo in, in, uh, Venus in Virgo is not really going to allow that. When she comes into Libra, she's not going to allow that either. All right. So there's nothing dumb going on. So you can trust yourself explicitly. You've got luck on your side. You can be fearless. You can be bold. You can be powerful. You can be expressive, but you have to ace of swords be honest. Okay. You have to be honest. And sometimes honesty is hard. Now, also, I don't want you to cross the line into berating yourself. That's not honesty. That's self-bullying. We're not trying to be doing anything like that, but honesty about what you can do, what you should quote unquote be doing without shame, right? (laughs) What you want to be doing, And it's possible that there is some kind of a passion that's kind of stirring up within you. I'm not really seeing, like we didn't get an ace of wands or anything, but I do kind of see an ignition or a spark with the emperor. Okay. There's something that drives you. There's a motivator. And sometimes that's passion, especially if you have a new creative, something that's coming up within you. When you have a new creative urge, whether that's to create a new business or to create a new piece of art or to create a new life or to create children or whatever. Um, when you have that new creative spark within you, it really puts this kind of 10 of swords, three of swords stuff into perspective because sometimes this is a product of what happens when we don't have that creative spark. When we don't have that creativity flowing in that connection with our higher self. A lot of times this happens when we're trying to force things. We're trying to force life to be what we want, but we don't really have a higher purpose to it. We want more money. So we go real hard for the money, but then we only realize we're just spinning our wheels and we're always just going to want more money and it's not going to be very fulfilling. Yes, you can make a ton of money and that's great, but are you actually enjoying your life? That's just an example. So this in contrast with the spark and see the thing about the ace of swords, it's like, you can't escape your own truth. You can't escape that voice inside of you that says, I want to initiate something. I want to get going. I want to get moving. That's what this astrological environment is about between now and January. Really, it started last, even I've been saying Libra, but it kind of really started with, with Virgo but I think, um, it really hit hard at the beginning of Libra when Mars came into Libra, that it was an excellent time to start taking action with things. And if there is see, it feels like there's some kind of a trade going on. You are eliminating this up here. Something new is coming in through the three of wands. We always see like ships coming in here. This is going to be traded for this. So there's actually not a loss. The scales are going to remain balanced. Now this may be a slow process. I'm not suggesting that all of this is happening in November, but I am suggesting that you're going to become aware of it. 
in November. You're going to become aware that you're moving on into the next phase of something and that the current struggles and the current problems are going to, you know, you'll either solve them or find your way out or whatever, and you'll be opening a new door. There's always going to be stuff to deal with. I'm not saying it's a perfect ride, but you're going to attain new levels of security and new levels of stability with whatever is coming in. This may have been stable at one point, but it got to that point where it's like, at what point does something that is so stable kind of hinder growth? It just kind of expired is what I'm feeling. It expired. It played out. That's it. So now the new has to come. It's almost like you don't have a choice. Like this has to happen. The universe is forcing Scorpio to go through this. Um, But with the six of coins, like I say, I always see things working out even, or it's, it's like if something goes out, something new will come in and pay out, but there, there's often uh, an improvement or an increase in comparison to whatever this was. So let's use money as an example, okay? Here's money that may have had to go out, or here's a job that you have to quit because you really don't like it, and here's the new job that you wanna take, but the salary, the payout, right? Whatever salary you lost here, you'll get more from your new job. So, still a job and it's still a salary, but it is more. But the only way you could get that is if you quit this. The elimination of this is essential in order to create space for what's coming in that three of wands. Don't be afraid to eliminate during Scorpio season. You are the zodiac sign of elimination. It is okay to cancel things out of your life, especially if they are unhealthy or they are just not serving you anymore, all right? Uh, In a healthy way, I'm not telling you to just go and and be barbaric and hurt people, but, (laughs) um, you know, when it comes to real world things. So let's see what else comes out, Scorpio. You do seem self-aware, though. I don't think Scorpio is confused all that much about themselves and what they themselves want. They may be confused about how to get it or how to go about getting it or, but it doesn't seem confused. Yeah. Eight of swords. Beautiful. That's the path. I knew there was something about passion. And then we get the ace of wands. I'm actually so happy we got the ace of wands. It's exactly the card I wanted to see. And it fits so beautifully with the emperor. It is the spark. I'm like, yeah, there's something creative going on for Scorpio right now. Big time. Please don't ignore that. There, there's blessings, there's wealth, there's prosperity in those creative urges. Um, I look at the Eight of Swords. It tells me that you have no idea how to incorporate this Ace of Wands. I really, really want to hit home, you guys. That this is not all happening. Like, you're not going to... Uh, I, uh, how do I phrase this? It's, it's not going to go from quitting this and bringing this in and letting your creative stuff flow all in November. Okay. I do think this is going to be a process. It's going to take time, but it is going to be a process that you're going to love. And the fearlessness really comes down to this ace of wands. It says, Scorpio, are you going to be fearless and jump on this ace of wands? Because there is a lot of, um, like, this is not a think, a thinking card. This is more thinking. But the Ace of Wands, like, again, Eight of Swords, like, don't think about this creative impulse. And it may feel like an impulse, and you may even question yourself and say, how sustainable even is this? You may be surprised at the sustainability of some of the impulses that you're experiencing right now especially with Saturn. Okay. On November 4th, Saturn stations direct. It's going to be going direct Saturn in your fifth house can be such a beautiful transit. I'm not saying it's all roses. Okay. Cause (laughs) roses and rainbows, cause I know it's not, but the creative things, right? Fifth house, fifth house, Pisces, 
um, creative house, whatever it is that's initiated and created during that time has longevity. It has the potential to stand the test of time. So again, you can trust, you can trust this. You can trust the stars right now. You don't have to be able to see everything and you can have strategy. And I encourage you to have some type of strategy. I encourage you to think about what your next steps are. I encourage you to, you know, to take control of your life and to dominate your, yourself a little bit, um, to be in control of yourself, to, to, cause it does take self-control to be fearless, right? Fearless and, uh, impulsiveness. Well, I'm trying because <laughs> fearless can be a function of like a purposeful function, but it can also be rooted in like idiocy, right? <laughs> this is not idiocy, obviously. Uh, you're, you are thinking the emperor thinks the, the emperor calculates, but I don't want you to think it to death. And I don't want you to think, I don't want you to think yourself out of things just because you can't foresee exactly how something is going to integrate into your life. Now I like the queen of swords. I'm having a hard time feeling that that's you. And I just so happened to see the bottom of the deck. I don't normally do bottom of the deck stuff, but I just so happen to see it. 10 of coins, luck is on your side. Don't worry, Scorpio, there's prosperity in this for you. Okay. Another indication of that. But the queen of swords feels like another person, a person of reason, but there's also an encouraging quality there. Now the queen of swords does not feel really connected to stuff to me. She feels like separate separate on the outside looking in. This is someone who could have a nice neutral opinion. This is someone who could help you kind of balance the pros and cons of different things. But remember the goal here is to get rid of this and to allow new things to come in. So maybe her role right now is to help you to figure out how to get rid of this and which choices and which decisions and actions can you take to help you eliminate this? This will come in naturally. Ace of wands, three of wands. This will all come in naturally. If you try to do this first, try to bring all this stuff in first, it's not going to have space because there's too much of this going on. Okay. It's like you, you want to get out of the pattern, but you continue making the same patterned choices but then you're trying to expect more to come in. It's like, well, you're, you're making decisions that limit yourself. So how could you ever experience more? You know, like you don't want to be living in a contradiction. You don't want to be contradicting. So the number one thing to be focusing on probably through November sole focus is eliminating this stuff, eliminating the patterns that don't serve and choosing different choices. Queen of Swords can help you identify those and help you make choices that are digestible and not going to completely throw your life upside down. Because you're the whole you're you're not trying to create a mess of your life, you know. You're not trying to do anything like that. You're just trying to improve, and it's possible to improve through a smooth process or through a gradual process. And I think that's better for fixed signs anyway. And I think that's better for Jupiter gradual. Um, but it doesn't mean that urge isn't going to be there. So this is probably a friend or, a, you know, some kind of a counselor or a coach or someone, someone that you respect. It might be a spouse. This is definitely not like a toxic parent or a toxic relationship. Okay. This is someone that you respect. You respect their opinions and their ideas. If it's not someone, you know, personally, it might be someone you, you know, you like their books, you follow them on social media or something, and their advice can be really, really helpful. But I do think it's a, a chance for Scorpio to start making high quality decisions that genuinely will change their lives, right? Scorpio, this is an opportunity for you to really change your life. And it can be not so dramatic. You know, this doesn't have to be dramatic. This feels controlled and it feels, uh, full of intent. 
So it's a beautiful thing. It really, really is a beautiful thing. Okay, let us plot the clarifiers. Okay, so we're gonna pull out the clarifiers for the Oracle cards. For those of you who are new to my channel, the cards I'm about to pull out, we're gonna talk for another 25 to 30 minutes about everything in the comprehensive reading. All the links are in the description box and the comment thread down below. So if you want to um, check that out, you are more than welcome. So let's see what comes through with the Badger Spirit. Beautiful Knight of Swords. That actually goes in really handy. Six of Coins again. Happy that card came out. And another Queen of Swords. Okay. Luck is on your side. So the environment. Nine of Coins. Page of Coins. Six of Swords. Beautiful, beautiful. So for the Emperor, what does Scorpio need to know for this nine card block? The world, excellent. Seven of Wands, Ten of Wands. There's the work. <laughs> there is the work. Eight of Wands, King of Coins, and an Ace of Cups. Beautiful. Three of Cups. Another Six of Swords, Queen of Coins, Seven of Swords, Page of Coins again, Three of Coins. Another Ace of Wands, Strength, and another eight, uh, Knight of Swords. I love the Knight of Swords in that deck, or in this deck, the Michael Greer deck. A nine of coin, I'm sorry, nine of cups, in addition to the nine of coins here. Another three of swords, getting lots of repeats, and another six of coins. It really is about that six of coins and understanding that you're in some kind of a trade off moment. Chariot and the magician. Ugh, love the magician. High priestess. Another. Or not another, uh, eight of coins, I mean. Ten of cups, amazing. Queen of wands. Another three of wands and a king of cups, which that's your card. All right, Scorpio. So this is where we are going to pick up in the comprehensive. So if you want to join, you're more than welcome. Again, link in the description box and then comment thread down below. Thank you so much. You guys know how much I love and adore you. Have an amazing month and I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.